Geauga Local Access Cable, GTV, presents Chardon High Hilltopper Football. Welcome to Chardon High's new Memorial Field, the site of tonight's independent contest between the Akron Springfield Spartans and our very own Chardon Hilltoppers. Good evening, everyone. This is Doug Snyder along with John Walsh. Delighted to join you for another season of sports on GTV. This is a very special night as we start a new season of sports here on GTV, and it's even more special because we're standing on the new Chardon Memorial Field. In addition to our game coverage, we'll also be showing you different parts of this terrific new facility. John, let's first talk about tonight's contest, and then we'll uh, explore this new field. What are your thoughts about tonight's matchup? Okay, tonight I think with the opening of this new stadium, it's going to be excitement for both squads. We have both teams who have playoff bound. Chardon had seven consecutive years in the playoffs. Last year was their first down year. They went five and five. Springfield was four and six. Both are proud playoff proven teams. They're ready to get back into it, so I think the excitement's going to be built up, and the new facility just adds to it. This is what high school football is all about. I talked with uh, Ben Kevin earlier in the week, and one of the first things he mentioned to me was the results of last year's game. How do you think that will play in the minds of the Hilltoppers tonight? Well, I think the Hilltoppers were a little embarrassed last year. They put the ball on the ground a lot more than a normal Hilltopper team does. I think they feel they have something to prove, and plus they got that home field thing going for them. They hate losing here in Chardon. 33 home wins in a row. You don't want to be part of the team that ends that streak. Uh, at this point in time, we'd like to bring in Don Novacek. He's president of Count On Me, the organization that made this field possible. Uh, Don, first of all, congratulations. Uh, this is a, a, a night to be proud of, uh, and you should make, make sure you take a minute to enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Don is, uh, is regarded as the man who spearheaded the drive behind this. Uh, Don, I attended the Sunday night festivities, and you talked about the Field of Dreams theme. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your inspiration for the field? Well, really, I, uh, our, the inspiration was I went to Ravenna, saw what Ravenna had done with their new facility, and I uh, just thought I'm tired of being embarrassed about Chardon. I've lived here all my life, grew up here, went to school here, played sports here, raising my family here, and I was just embarrassed at the state of our athletic facilities and uh, decided... It's done to stop, I'm, I'm, I'm done complaining about it, I'm going to try to do something about it. And so we got together a small group of people and, uh, and it turned into a bigger group of people and then a bigger group of people and it, it's beautiful. I mean, I think it's, I think it's as good as any facility, high school facility that I've been in. Well, the quality of the field speaks for itself and our viewers will see that tonight as the game progresses. But one of the amazing things is that the Board of Education approved this uh, project in January and here we are a few short months later standing here uh, about a half an hour from kickoff. It's really incredible. I mean, it, it's taken, obviously, no, but no one person can do that. But uh, Tim Smith, who was really our kind of project uh, manager from the construction standpoint, uh, is incredible. And, uh, and uh, he really made it happen, so. Don, you're probably the person closest to the, uh, the construction of the field and, and the laying of the turf and those kinds of things. Can you tell us a little bit about any unique features that we might want to look for as the game sure. goes on? Sure. This turf, it's called Astro Play. Same company that makes Astro Turf makes it, but as, just like everything else, technology is changing in artificial surfaces. And this, uh, a year from now, this surface will be better than it is right now, although it's great right now. Tonight, because they just finished the field, they actually worked. They didn't sleep at all. They were here from 7 in the morning yesterday till about 5 in the afternoon today. And uh, you're going to see some rubber bounce up off the field. That's because they've just put it in. But over the next three or four weeks, that'll settle down in. The field will become a little firmer. But I think what you're going to notice uh, uh, about it is that uh, we're, gonna, we're not going to have any injuries at all because of the surface. It's, it's a great playing surface. It's, it's better than a grass field, in my opinion. And uh, I think that's the thing that our kids are really going to like. And it's great for soccer as well. Okay, good point. Uh, no project like this can go without a few hitches in the, in the road. Can you tell us some of the major obstacles yeah. that you had to overcome? Sure. Believe it or not, the clay soil that we have under here wasn't hard enough to build this surface on or to put the blacktop on. So we had to go through a process called stabilization. We had to put a product called calcement in. That was $50,000 that we didn't plan on spending. And, uh, and, you know, along the way there were a number of uh, uh, glitches, but pretty much most of the decisions we're really happy with. Which I one time heard somebody say, if you build a house and, you, and the first time you get 70% of what you want, you've done a great job. Well, I think we've gotten probably 
90% of what we want. Now we got to finish it. We don't have any home bleachers. We rented 1,000 seats uh, for the visitors to sit in this year, uh, but we want to build home bleachers on this side next year. Uh, and uh, we don't have restrooms. We're using a sophisticated porta potty, and we don't have concession stands or boost or place for the booster club to sell their stuff. So we've brought in trailers. There, nobody seems to mind. Everybody has a smile on their face tonight. Well, if, if you've watched this literally rise from the dust and you look around and you almost want to pinch yourself and ask, are we really standing here in this new field? We're about a half an hour away from uh, kickoff time. It's probably time for you to shift gears from building manager to assistant coach. Yes. On behalf of all Chardon football fans and Chardon residents, thank you for all of your efforts. You. Good luck tonight. Thanks. Enjoy yourself. Thanks. John, a uh, little historical perspective. Uh, any thoughts? You've been around Chardon football for an awful long time. Any thoughts as we stand here uh, prepared to kick off what, what literally is a new era of Chardon football? Yes, it is, and I'm sure they want to establish the new tradition again, get back to the playoffs. I think that's the goal of this team and for the future teams of Chardon. And quite honestly, from what I've seen in practices and scrimmages, they've got it going for them. It's an exciting night, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, tonight's game is brought to you by cable subscribers like you. That's right. Tonight's contest is completely funded by cable subscriber franchise fees from Chardon Township, Chardon Village, Hamden Township, and Munson Township. This week's game is part of the GTV programming service made possible by your support. Our other funding communities not participating in this particular program are Burton Township, Burton Village, and Middlefield Village. We'll be back right after this brief timeout this evening for four people that have done just an amazing job for this school district and this community. Uh, Betty Farrell, our board president, will help me make those presentations. But here with us tonight, we also have Judy May, Vice President, Paula Palama, Bob Fanley, and Larry Ryder is somewhere here in the stadium. So with that, Betty. Thank you, Jing. Dreams really do come true. We want to thank Don Novacek for bringing the inspiration to our community for this facility. And on behalf of the Board of Education, I'd like to present to him a plaque for the outstanding vision and volunteer effort on behalf of the students of Chardon and the entire community. Don Novacek. Thank you. Appreciate it, Betty. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Another untiring worker here this past summer has been Tim Smith. Tim, we'd also like to present you with a plaque. Another person we could fail to neglect is Dave Jevnikar. And gentlemen, who I don't think has gotten much sleep in the last 48 hours, Dan Chapman. Dan has been wonderful all summer. With all four of these gentlemen, we couldn't have had this miracle without you. Thank you again. I feel honored to ask you to stay here. We're not taking care of you. 
This field will not only serve as a memorial to those who have served, but all those to also to those who were killed or missing in action. If not for those veterans, we might not be here, sitting here tonight, waiting to see a football game. The members of Veterans Foreign Wars Post 6519 and Shared American Legion Post 167 will be forever grateful for naming this facility Shard Memorial Field. In the future, the VFW and the American Legion will raise the flags before each home game. And again, we thank you for this great tribute. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, will you please stand and honor the memory of the veterans for whom we dedicate this field by singing along as the band plays our national anthem. Back at the new Chardon Memorial Field, John, and we've had the rededication of the field, and it's finally time for football. 
The Hilltoppers are getting their kickoff unit in place. The Spartans are ready to receive, and all the work is done. All the preparations are made, and it's time for football. Now that fun begins, let the games go. All right, it's a beautiful night for football here. Uh, sunny, about 70 degrees. I can't think of a better place to be. This is what high school sports is all about, ladies and gentlemen. Receiving for the Spartans are number 16, I'm sorry, number 18, Nick Parrish. Number 21, Dwayne Edwards. And number 30, Larry Burge. Yeah, we got Parrish teeing it up for Chardon and the opening kick of this new stadium here. You can just feel the excitement in the air, you know? The Hilltoppers are lined up on the sideline. The coaches are in place, and uh, we are ready for some action. The Hilltoppers be moving north to south in this first quarter of play here. The referees are getting their signals in place. We have to remember also it's the first night for the officials, so uh, the, the pregame jitters are going to be gone in a moment, John, and we are ready to go. One hit, and they're gone. <laughs> We're into it, that's all it takes. Here's the moment we've been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. A new era of Chardon football is underway. Good high kick. That's Edwards taking the kick, and he's tackled immediately at about the 26 yard line by a host of Chardon Hilltoppers. Yeah, essentially it looked like he tried to stop and uh, just his feet slipped out from underneath him. Uh, I don't believe that's indicative of what this carpet's gonna be like. I think that was just one of those incidental get out of balance and slip. Could be nerves, could be a variety of things. Everyone that we've talked to said the footing will be even better than a regular turf, so that certainly is not an issue here. Spartans line up for their first play from scrimmage. And immediately the flags are down. I think we had a little jumping on the Spartan side there, because. Chardon was going into their little shift and the people jumping back and forth. One of their linemen, I think, pulled up just a hair early, and so they should be marched back. We'll see if my judgment is correct here. They're discussing it. Seems like the Zebras are going, what'd you see? I don't know, what'd you see? <laughs> we talked about the pregame jitters a moment ago, and I think uh, from the looks of it, the Spartans definitely have a case of yeah, those. Yeah, they had a little procedure call there. Oh, offsetting, we had an offside on Chardon, a legal procedure. So we'll just redo it. All that discussion, and we're right back where we start. The ball is on Springfield's 27. I'm a little lost on that one. How, do you, how can both things happen? Somebody has to move first, don't they? Someone has to move first. Because like in the pros, a uh, defense can get back, not in the high school. Once you encroach there, that's it. So. I don't know how both could happen at the same time. We'll try it again. First and 10 from the 27. There's a foul. Ball ball's loose. I, I think Spartans got it back. Looks like. Any question of pregame jitters, John, is gone. The Spartans have them. Oh, yeah. Tommy Phillips, their tackle, luckily jumped back on that ball. As you see here, it was a clean handoff. I don't think Edwards just ever took it away. Maybe he got far side of the field. He might have taken a helmet right on that ball to jar it free, or he just didn't have it tucked away. But the handoff was good and clean from quarterback uh, Huddleston. Well, after it's all said and done, it's second and five, a bootleg. Huddleston brings it to the near side. He's tackled, and the football's loose again. That's a sharp ball. There are four Hilltoppers on that ball, John. Recovered by... Number that 34, Matt Albright. Matt Albright. That. That's the first big break of the game. This is what killed Chardon last year was turnovers in their game against them. So far, uh, Springfield seems to be having a little jitters up front here. I talked to a Coach Doyle earlier in the week, and he said one of the bright spots uh, in the preseason has been Matt Albright. He's shown great speed. See, that ball speed. clearly came out early on that one. And there's that speed Coach Doyle talked about. Uh, they, they said, Matt's been timed at a 4-6-40, and he covered about eight yards to get on that football pretty quickly. Actually, that was springing motion. He was <laughs> like a panther jumping on that one. The dive judges might have yes. been able to rate that one. It's we have a timeout on the field. Quick reactions on that one. 
Uh, it'll be interesting to see as we look around this facility here. And uh, it's just been a marvel watching this thing being built. And there's still more to go. So the Count on Me committee is still looking for help, you know, either in physical labor and uh, definitely in funding. So uh, get your pledges together. This is all privately supported stuff. The school hasn't put anything into this facility down here. It's all been private donations, and it's just a tremendous effort by the whole community here. Those of you interested in uh, pledging can contact the Count on You at P.O. Box 798 in Chardon, 44024. And as John mentioned, there's plenty of work to do, so your pledges would certainly be appreciated. Yeah, it's essentially reached the point where let's finish the dream. You know, it's obviously more than a dream. It's a tangible asset right here finish it off time and would, would just need more support to keep it going and finish it off and just have maybe as Don Dabotzik says maybe the finest high school facility in Ohio or even the country it's gorgeous well let's see if the Shard and Hilltoppers can capitalize on that handoff goes to number 22 Tyler Turner he might have lost like half a yard on that one he, he kept trying to wait for a lane to open up, and you just got to run towards it, and, and as soon as you see it, react to it and hit it. He was just dancing a little bit, and you can't be doing that in the backfield there. A loss of maybe a yard on the play. It looks like second and 11. Handoff up the middle of the fullback, Chuha. That's good, strong running there. He, he picked up uh, close to six yards, I'd say. It. That should bring us to a third and four. Coach Doyle mentioned uh, when I talked with him that Luke Chuha has just been tremendous in the preseason. I think that's a sign right there. As you mentioned, John, that's good, aggressive, strong run. I tell you, he's in an offensive and a defensive position where he's going to see a lot of physical action coming from that fullback and nose tackle. You meet a lot of the players in the opposing team. Uh, we Mix had up on the exchange. I think what happened there was the center might have snapped it just a hair early. Nobody was ready for it. The quarterback Kevin had sense enough to just fall on it. So that's that's just like a yard loss on that with Kevin being listed as the ball carrier. That's how they'll go down in the stat sheets. We go to fourth and maybe six now. Yeah, you see here on the replay that uh, Ben took the snap and fumbled a little bit. Uh, well, the line wasn't moving, so I think that was prematurely okay. snapped. He, as you mentioned, he's uh, six yards to go. presence of mind enough to jump on that, and here we go, fourth and six. Fake handoff. We got a bootleg. Got an open Dump pass. pass. Merritt dives forward and gets the first down. That was second effort. He was held behind the line there, which is the 25-yard line. He needed to cross it for the first down. He had the presence to realize where he was, stretched it out, first down, first first down of the season, first one in the facility. This is for all you trivia butts out there. You can see, see he's behind the line right now. He's gonna cross that line to get it. Dives, first down. Nice second effort there by Dan Merritt, just going forward, just as, which is exactly what you gotta do. Stretch that body out, that's a good yard and a half. Real nice. Uh, play fake by Kevin to uh, release the receiver. And here we go, first and 10 for the Hilltoppers. Merrick goes in motion, as does Turner. Ball goes oh, up the middle nice. too high. And he's rumbling toward another first down. Boy, oh boy, that was pretty. He just got down low on that. Kid was down around his ankles. He actually was down lower than him. Drove through it, broke that ankle tackle, and just drove ahead. Good bull rushing. Great job there. I tell you, it's tough. Luke is low to the ground, and he runs low, and he's got those big, thick thighs and stuff. He's a load coming at you because it's tough to grab. You're grabbing top of shoulder pads because he's coming in at such a low trajectory there. Gain of eight on the play, second and two. Another flag then. Yeah, these are the type of things that you see in an opening game. You know, just, again, jitters, again, not quite into the sink of playing yet. It'll happen from both sides as Chardon jumps a little bit on that one. One of the things Coach Doyle talked about with the reduced preseason 
is that it's a lot to cram in in three weeks to get prepared for a football game. Uh, this is the second year of the reduced preseason. They've gone from two scrimmages to one, and uh, Coach Doyle said that uh, he just remembers how it was when they had that extra week of, of practice, the extra scrimmage, and uh, he, he wishes that they would, would uh, bring that well, back. Well, that's true. There's no question about it. The more you can practice, the more continuity you can get, but it's equal footing for both teams, equal footing for every team in Ohio. Second and seven, Kevin running the option, keeps oh, the ball, turns the nice corner, block out and there. gets down very near the goal line. Nice block by Dan Rodriguez right on the corner there. Number two came back, held up that guy so Kevin could get to the outside. Let's see if we can get a replay on that one. Okay, I'm just watching the corner, the block that gets him around the corner. It's a split end, Dan Rodriguez. Flares out, comes back in and throw the block. You'll see him coming right there, right there. See him get around him? Nice job. First and goal <coughs> from the one yard line. The trivia buffs get ready because we may have the first touchdown in the new facility. Yes, we do. The middle, and we have the first touchdown of the season of the Millennium and of the brand new Chardon Memorial Field. Luke Chuha on a one yard run. Man, he's looking like your stereotypical fullback to come and low, just pumping those legs. Cause they're hitting them. They're hitting them early, you know, meeting them up in the hole. Watch, you'll see he's met up inside the hole there and he just pumps those legs and breaks leg tackles. Yeah, look at him, pump, pump, and he's in the end zone. Strong running. Good looking drive. Good short, little, just straight ahead, power short and football drive. Nate Davis comes on to attempt the point after. With the hold of Andy Island Field. The kick is up, and it is good. As we have fighting in the, the R on the Chardon spelled out shrubs in the end zone. <laughs> That's the neat thing about this state. The old one was fenced in and the ball stayed inside the confines of the field. This one brings the crowd into it. On the other end of the field, as we can pan down to the north end there, that's like where the students are, I think, inevitably gonna end up sitting down there. And kicks go right into the bleachers and have to be returned back. And that's kind of neat, just getting uh, the fans involved in the game. It's just a, an intermittent, nice little facility. I love it here. I mean, besides the beauty of it and all, it's just, it's got character. It's a stadium that has character. Well, those uh, youngsters down in that south end zone who fought for that extra point are gonna remember when they're in high school catching those extra points and field goals, and that's gonna be all part of the Chardon football mystique, and it's just a, a yep. great thing. Yep, and some kid's gonna say, I got the first extra point ball. <laughs> Probably in, ten, in 20 years, about 20 people will be saying they got the first extra point ball. Oh, that's what everybody was at Woodstock. Everybody was there <laughs> when uh, somebody pitches a perfect game. <laughs> and 20 people will now claim to have caught the first extra point at the new Chardon Memorial Field. I think you and me are the only ones that can't claim that because we're, <laughs> we're kind they of giving ourselves are. away, yeah. Okay, here we go with the second kickoff. Okay, I think jitters might be a thing of the past. I think both teams are going to get down to some serious football now. Parrish boots the ball. Again, kicks it towards the corner there. He's down. That's, That's twice in a row. Dwayne is having footing problems. He is definitely, I have not seen it on anyone else, but that's on both kicks now. He has had some sort of a problem. The Chardon defensive unit uh, takes the field for the second possession. You know something that'd be kind of interesting. Wonder what he's wearing on his feet. Uh, you know, it's very, he might have turf shoes or something. And this field is made to wear regular football spikes. And turf shoes might slip across the top where spikes would dig, I don't know. You know, it's just a guesswork. If he, has, if he has turf shoes on, they might be scrambling to uh, replace oh, that. That play went nowhere. Hand off and a loss on the play. It looks like the entire Hilltopper defensive line was in the backfield there, led by Number 67, Brian Landis and uh, Luke Chuha. Yeah, you had Brian Linville in there. As a matter of fact, I think pretty much the whole defensive front was in on that tackle there. They just shot the gaps and were right in it. Edwards didn't have a prayer that day. Footing or no footing, he had no prayer on that one. Landis, Linville, and Chuha spending a lot of time in the Spartan backfield early in the game. 
Well, let's add Matt Albright to that. Let's put the whole front four there. In we there. go. Even better. Loss of five on the play, second and 15 from the Spartan 12. Bergdorf in motion. Quarterback drops back. Incomplete pass intended for number 27, Josh Kaiser. Dan Merritt there to defend the play for the Hilltop. Yeah, that was good tight. That was just a quick little out on that one. Uh, trying to get back to the original line of scrimmage. It was geared to be a five, six yard play. Merritt had very good coverage. And I mean, there wasn't much you could do when you do that quick out, you know, you can just back the guy. And as soon as he touches the ball, lay it into him. And he was there ready to do that. Well, this is an important play, John. Third and 15, you're down 7-0 already. <laughs> and you're in deep, deep in your own territory. That's the whole thing. You don't want to give them back good field position again. Huddleston back to pass, tucks it down, and takes the ball forward, nearly back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, just a little bit shy of it. But uh, like you said, they, they're they going to have to boot the ball back to Chardon. Huddleston's listed as their punter. So he's getting a lot of duty with the football early in the game. Back to receive for the Hilltoppers are number two, Dan Rodriguez, and number three, Corey Battles. It is Huddleston back to punt. Snap. Nearly blocked. Yeah, and there's a flag on the play. Roll. It's going to stop just over the midfield stripe. There's a flag on the play back where the ball was punted. The Hilltoppers nearly blocked that punt, John, and uh, somehow missed the ball, and they may be roughing the punter on the play. That's an automatic. That's what they're going to call That's going to be an automatic first down then. Well, they say football's a game of inches. That is certainly the case because the Hilltoppers were within literally inches of blocking that punt, missed it, ran into the kicker, and as a result, yep. we're stepping off a penalty, and the ball uh, re is retained by the Spartans. If you can just get one finger on that ball, you can destroy the kicker, but without touching it, you can't touch him at all. I would suspect Huddleston's feeling like a very lucky man right now because that uh, was very, very close to being blocked. At any rate, it's first and 10 for the Spartans, ball on their own, 38. Oh man, penetration big time that time. Number 43, John Housen into the backfield to make the tackle on the quarterback, Huddleston. Yeah, he came straight in. I think they were doing their outside linebacker blitz on that one because Halson was right there just as he was doing his fake and took down Huddleston immediately. Coach Doyle identified John Housen as a very pleasant surprise so far in the preseason. He's replacing Brian Smith, who was the second leading tackler last year, and I think that's certainly evidence that, that uh, he's doing an outstanding job. The oh, pitch geez. is tipped. Oh, Ball's ball. loose on the ground. It's still loose. Chardon has it. Number 20-something or other. I didn't see who finished up, but I saw the 20. Looks like 22, 22. Tyler Turner. Tyler Turner. It came up. And that was, uh, saw somebody bend it down to pick it up. When you're that deep, you fall on that thing. <laughs> you know, and I'm sure when they're watching films, that's what the coach is going to tell them. They didn't snap it to the quarterback. They were running some little razzle-dazzle there. You can see Matt Albright tried to pick it up, and then it was still a loose ball. Until Turner fell on top of it there. It looked like Matt Albright got a hand on the pitch and deflected it, and from there it was just a, a scramble for the football. Hilltoppers get another break. Oh, First yeah. and 10 Hilltoppers on their Spartan 17-yard line, it looks oh, like. Nice whole lane open up on that right side. Eric wow. Smith carries the ball. Eric was recovering from uh, some injuries this week. He looked very healthy on that play, John. Oh, yeah, yeah. Once you get uh, out there and it's Friday night, the injuries have a way of healing up. You had Nick Schussler and Je Jeremy Reynoso throwing lead blocks on that one, doing an excellent job as they open up a nice lane. Gain of eight on the play, second and two. The handoff nice goes balance. to Merritt. Nice balance. He got boxed in there, just kept moving forward. That's the important thing. If it's not there, just keep going forward there until something opens. 
That's what he found, was able to balance himself with one hand on the ground and go forward for a nice little gain where really it was pretty well defense. It was just good running on Merritt's part. First and goal from the five yard line, 350 left in the first quarter. Chardon leading 7-0. Knocking on the door to extend that lead. Yeah, I'll tell you, Springfield's, they're having problems holding on to that ball. That's their big downfall there. Look at Hand that ball. And off to Chuha. Look at that ball running. Oh, that's got to be like at a four inch line. I John, can't believe with this stretch he didn't get across. Luke Chuha is gaining an awful lot of yards after he's hit for the first time, it looks like. Well, I'll tell you what. Doug, get down there and try to take him down. <laughs> I think you'll find out he's a strong running back. And it's, like I said, watch how low he comes in. He punches up and, you know, he's like, the shoulder pads are like, seem like they're two feet off the ground. You can't get underneath them. All you take is this powerful upper body coming at you. Leans in, that's in there. Hand off to Chuha. Another touchdown for the Hilltoppers. And that's two for Luke Chuha tonight. As th these are the type of games that put you into the scoring leaders of the area real, real quick. There's the handoff to Chuha. Follows the blockers right into the end zone and extends the Hilltopper <laughs> lead. And in the end zone, we have our little group of kids waiting for the ball. Look at them. <coughs> that is cool. That's that's. That's a community touch, you know, that just makes it seem nice. You know, like you said, everybody gets a little piece of it. They become part of the team. Nate Davis ready to attempt his second point after tonight. Puts it through. And ready to complete his second point after attempt tonight. So, so far tonight, it's been all Hilltoppers is they haven't really been able to do much in the way of anything wrong. You know, they've had a couple of penalties, but short of that, they played a, just an infallible, powerful defense, strong running game, exactly what the conventional Hilltopper teams like. And Springfield, on the other hand, they're down a little bit. They got to shake those things off, get themselves right in, and start playing the type of football they're capable of. Well, if you're the Spartans right now, John, I think you want to focus on the fact that it's still early in the game. Three minutes left oh, in the yeah. first quarter. There's plenty of time. We need to get the ball, sustain a drive, and get some continuity with our offense. Yeah. If yeah, you're the, the Hilltoppers, then you just want to go for the juggler uh, and, and keep them down while they're down. Yes, exactly so. They got to shake off. I'm sure it's going through their heads, the fumbles and giving the ball to them deep in the territory. And, you know, that's the type of thing you just got to put in the past and just – start from that point because like you said we still have three minutes left in this opening quarter so this game is nowhere near over but the spartan players got to start realizing that and getting their continuity back starting to let their uh, talent show a little bit this is a younger team than the spartans had last year talking with the chardon coaches they're young they're pretty athletic uh, maybe some of the youth is, is showing through right now fact remains that the Hilltoppers are up 14-0 and Nick Parrish has had his third kickoff. Here comes Edwards. He returns the football out just past the 35-yard line. Boy, he doesn't, he, he doesn't look like the type of runner you want to give a lot of room to. He seems like one of those quick water bug types that just dances around. So you want to keep on top of him, not let him get that running room. Or he's got he's got the makings of a very difficult guy to take on one and one. I think there's uh, some of that athleticism the coaching staff for Chardon talked about uh, with the Springfield Spartans. We have an injury on the field, That's number it. 66 for the Springfield Spartans. Clay Wetzel is down on the play. Yeah, he was essentially on the side where that the whole big pile up came because everybody shot down. Ball was kicked on that end, and then Edwards cut it back in towards the middle of the field there. But most of the players were banging around in that area there. Tonight's cable cast is funded by your cable subscriber franchise fees. And we'd like to again extend thanks to all GTV funding communities, including those not funding tonight's contest, for their year round support. They are Burton Township. Burton Village, Chardon Township, Chardon Village, 
Hamden Township, Middlefield Village, and Munson Township. We are thrilled to be able to continue to bring you local public service programming with a special emphasis on those communities. Thanks again for supporting GTV, and thanks again to our viewers for their support. The response has been absolutely wonderful. And the results have been absolutely wonderful tonight, John. Oh yeah, if you're a Hilltopper fan, uh, kind of keep that down. We're sitting on the Springfield side, keep that in mind, okay? <laughs> But if no, anything happens, I'm right behind you as far as that goes, fair, John. Fair enough. I, I appreciate that. I'm a good wall. Uh-oh. I don't like that. It looks like an ankle or a knee. Something wrong with the left leg there. He's not putting any weight down at it at all. And I'll tell you, they can't afford to have injuries. This is a small squad here. What would you count? 31 players 31, on their roster? Exactly. And to give our viewers something, excuse me, something to compare it to, Chardon is dressing 60 tonight, so it's uh, almost exactly uh, two to one. Yeah, he's hurting down there. I'm not sure exactly. He got, might have rolled that ankle underneath him. But we're back to the action again. First and 10 for the Spartans. Handoff goes to number 40, Brian Patterson. He's a strong looking runner there. They open up a little lane for him and he just shot through there. Got some good yardage, maybe six yards out of that. We come down to a second and four now. 2.32 remaining in the first quarter. Chardon Hilltoppers with a 14-0 lead. Officials timeout on the play. As we're nearing the end, 2.27 left in this uh, opening quarter of the 2000 season. Looks like Kevin Neal's having a, an equipment problem with maybe perhaps It's a helmet. something of the helmet. I don't know if a snap came undone or what. And it goes back on the head. We're ready to play ball. Buckle up that chin strap, Kevin, and let's go at it. Second and we'll call it four for the Spartans. Ball on their own 42-yard line. Fake handoff to Patterson, and the quarterback brings it to the near side. Gets a first down. And it looks like there's a late flag on the play, John. I didn't see the flag go down. They're calling it against, oh, when it rains, it pours. I just saw, he, I didn't see what he signaled, but he pointed Spartans in, so that ball is going to be coming back. Yeah, we'll see if we can pick up whether it was a click uh, blocking below the waist or what. That's what I suspect from where the flag was thrown there. Nothing I could see in the picture. The flag was oh, very late in the play. Right that behind be there, right, right there. on the legs. Is that what he called was the clip? I believe so. Well, it didn't move back that far. Ball is currently on the 35-yard line which makes it second and 11 for the Spartans. Well, at least they're starting to show a little bit of life here. Huddleston barking out the signals, takes the snap. Keep it a couple of end. fakes. Slips away from the rush, tucks the ball down, but he can't slip away from the rest of the Hilltopper defense. I see John Hausen in on the tackle. There was some great pursuit on that play. It looked like as soon as the defense knew he tucked that ball down, they all just made a beeline right for the quarterback. Yeah, they did a good job blocking up front, nullifying that up front, but uh, that's the thing. A lot of those up front guys take on all the linemen and stuff, and it's up to the linebackers to make the tackle. We're almost there, just got a little off. You see Hausen, there's Chuha downfield. He was in on that. And Painter, Dan Painter was in. There's the pass to the near sideline. Edwards, okay. he did pull it, it in. It looks like he pulled it in in time. There's some more of that athleticism you spoke of. John, that was a fine catch. Yeah, that was like behind him for a couple seconds there. And he pulled in. Yeah, in high school, you only need to get that, have full possession with one foot down in the field there. It was close. I mean, one more step, I don't think he would have had it possession in bounds. Officials are measuring. It's very close to a first down. We'll see if they got the needed yardage. But they don't even have to move the chains. The chains are right there. That's a chain gang man's dream. 
Oh yeah, There's nothing worse than running out <laughs> to the middle of the field. I've run the chain gangs before. No signal yet, but they're not moving the chains forward, no, I, so I they I might be a little short. Fourth and, uh, well, it's gotta be within inches or something, or they wouldn't have spent that much time on it. This is where head football coaches earn their money. You're down 14-0, it's fourth and less than a yard, well, and the Spartans watch, elect to go for it. Watch the jump. He might just, no, they're going. It's a handoff up the middle. Oh, There's Chris. Edwards breaking through for a first down. Quick hitter, nice blocking up front. They just open up a lane, and, and Edwards just flew through it. Yeah, he's got some quick acceleration. He was out of the blocks mighty quick. Gain of six and a half to seven yards on the play. And for the first time all evening, John, the Spartans have entered Hilltopper territory. Yes, they have. They actually have a nice drive going here. Mixing up the plays a little bit. Uh, putting in some passes and all. First and 10 from the Hilltopper 49 yard line. 36 seconds remaining Anderson in the first in motion. Board. Fake handoff, Huddleston turns it up. Gains one, maybe two yards on the play. That's an odd little play. You faked it and followed him right up into, into the, the hole. Into the same hole. So it's like faking and then using the guy as your lead blocker. I don't, I'm not sure if I've ever seen that one before, but grabbed a couple of yards out of it. Looked like uh, number 75, Jason Coyman in on the tackle there for the Hilltoppers. Gain of two, second and eight. And Springfield will not get that play in. That brings us to the end of the first quarter in the new Shard Memorial Field with the Hilltoppers enjoying a 14-0 lead. We'll be back right after this. Back at Shard Memorial Field for the beginning of the second quarter. And they just ran a little play off to their right side for maybe getting back to the line of scrimmage. That was about it. That'll bring up third down for the Spartans. If you're just joining us, Shardin scored two touchdowns in the first quarter, both on Luke Chuhay, or Chuha runs, excuse me, and hold a 14-0 lead as we begin the second quarter. I like Chu Hay though. <laughs> That's got a nice flu. Chu Hay. <laughs> I'm gonna chalk that one up to be a new. I don't think I only get that excuse one time, so if I use that again, slap me. Huddleston takes the snap, tucks it down immediately, brings it to the near side, and gets absolutely nothing. Number seven, Dan Merritt there to make the initial hit, and a whole host of Hilltoppers to finish the tackle. I'll tell you who did a nice job on that, wasn't in on the play, but Matt Albright, number 34, locked up the end. The end was blocking on him. The lead blocker had to come and spend him. He kept driving the legs. He took a blocker out so everybody else was free to flow along the line of scrimmage and make the tackle. That's the type of thing. The statistics, Albright gets nothing out of that one. He really made that play string out nicely, though. Did a super job in that corner. That brings up fourth and 11 for the Spartans. Huddleston back to punt to receive for the Hilltoppers. Number two, Dan Rodriguez. Number three, Corey Battles. The punt will go to Rodriguez, who calls for a fair catch. Nice high punt. That was a good job. And the Hilltoppers will take possession of the ball on their own 22-yard line. And now we'll see what they do. Uh, not looking at the goal line down here. They're gonna have to drive the length of the field, but I'll tell you, Chardon's kind of got a reputation. They can put together some time-eating drives. I've seen them go on nine, 10 minute drives before. You know, just slow, methodical, four yards, three yards, four yards, first down, move the chains, do the same thing over and over. Now would be the perfect time for one of those nine minute drives as we have 10 19 left in the second quarter. Handoff goes to number one, Eric Smith. He just got He's stood up there. Stacked up near the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he might have lost a yard, yard and a half or so. Or actually he lost more than that. What's that? Close to three yards, I guess. Bring up a second and 13. Good penetration by the 
Springfield defensive line. That brings up second and 13 for the Hilltoppers. Kevin looks over the defense. One of the things Coach Doyle likes about Ben Kevin is that he makes great audible calls, and he may just be calling one of those right now. The handoff goes to number four, Luke Chuha. Goes right up the middle. His favorite type of real estate, John, right up the gut. Yeah, and I don't believe anybody has brought him down on the first attempt. He always seems to break that first leg tackle. Well, the middle of that Springfield line, number 76, Atapa, 52, Anderson, and 51, Ternowski. I would suspect they're getting very tired of Mr. Chuha already in the game. Oh, yeah, because he's, he's a load. He uh, goes at, you know, low center of gravity. He's got 215 pounds of force coming at him. They're not that big a team. They, they're 220, 230 max up front guys there. Third and nine from the Hilltopper 23. Handoff again goes to number one, Eric Smith. And a flag is down on the play on the far side of the field. Yeah, that might be one of those illegal block areas down there, which I would suspect with minimal game on that, I would suspect that the Spartans would probably decline if it's on Chardon. Yeah, they're talking to the Spartans, so it is on Chardon. I would think they would decline it, get the ball back, and see if they can get something going. The call appears to be a legal procedure on the Hilltoppers. And it looks as if you're correct, John. No, the penalty is declined. That's a good choice because they, uh, they need to get some points on the board. And the only way you can really do that is with the ball. And moving them back a little bit deeper doesn't make that many big a difference. And Chardon can bust a big play out of that. So uh, best thing is decline it, take what you got there, and get the ball back. That brings up fourth and about seven for the Hilltoppers. Number 18, Nick Parrish, back to punt for the first time for Chardon tonight. Ooh, snap. Bad snap. Goes over Parrish's head. He retrieves it. Dodges one defender. Takes the ball to the far sideline and is well, forced out of bounds. There's the first big break that uh, Springfield was looking for there. They're going to get the ball back uh, just about under 15. That may be just what the Spartans need to uh, give him a little adrenaline. Let's see if that was the get him snap back in the or if he took his eyes off it a little bit. I know it was high, but. Well, couldn't see with that little flashed up thing there. He does a nice job of picking that ball up and, and runs and tries to make the best out of a bad situation. And he's forced out of bounds there at the 15, make it 14 yard line. This will give a great test to the Chardon defense. It's first and 10 from the Hilltopper 14 yard line. And the Spartans just picked up on their offense. We're starting to move a little bit, so. Uh, yeah, this will be a good test for them. Huddleston back to pass, chased. Tucks the ball down, escapes a couple defenders, and takes the ball near about the seven or eight yard line. Matt Albright, John, put some great early pressure on yeah. Huddleston, but he was quick and agile enough to be able to get around that. Huddleston just had that hair more speed. Albright did chase him down from behind, gave a good run but uh, wasn't quite able to catch up to him, as you'll see here in the replay. He's fading out, he's looking to pass. It wasn't a designed run, but he was driven out of the pocket. Albright just doesn't have enough speed to catch up to him. Dan Merritt comes and he breaks that tackle there. Hutt Huddleston's it's a, nice a good, solid quarterback, sure. Good running quarterback. He seems to be quite an all-around athlete. He's a quarterback, he's their punter. They have him listed as uh, the punt return man, so he can do a little bit of everything. And John. he plays defense, too. He's their safety man back there. So he's on the field pretty much the whole game. Second and three. Handoff goes up the middle for a Springfield touchdown. Number 40, Brian Patterson takes the handoff and goes right up the middle yep. and gets into the end zone. Yeah, he's a good, solid running back. You, you look, he's... He's listed on the roster as a six foot 200. I'm not sure about that six foot. He looks a little lower than that. The 200, I believe, though, he's a, he's a low two. The camera missed it a little bit. Went with the fake as the play ran off to the right side of the screen there. The Spartans prepare for their first extra point of the night and the season. Number 15, Brian Wood. Knocks the ball through the uprights 
and Akron Springfield has gotten the break they need, and they cut the Chardon lead in half. It's now 14-7 Chardon with 7.03 remaining in the second quarter. Okay, we're back to having a ball game, and uh, this isn't where you want Chardon wants to put a nine-minute drive together because they only have seven left in this quarter. <laughs> Even English teachers like me can figure out you can't squeeze a nine-minute drive it's into time. seven minutes. It's time management. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Yes. That's why you're the legendary color man, John. You can make great observations like that. Yes, yeah, state the obvious and <laughs> state it twice if you have to. Nice scoreboard up here. You get the thing, thank you, Chardon, after prom. I didn't read the lead in, so I don't know what they're thanking them, but I'm sure they deserve the thanks, Absolutely. You know? Those prom workers are up all night, and uh, that's quite a job. A lot of times they plan oh, yeah. for the entire year for that, so. They make some really grand ones around here, too. And every year it's a... Uh, it's a hidden secret theme that, Is that right? all the school kids know about a week in advance. All right. Some, somebody tells their kid, somebody on the committee tells their kid that it just spreads to the school. <laughs> but parents don't know this, so we'll keep it secret. <laughs> okay, back to receive for the Hilltoppers are number seven, Dan Merritt, number 22, Tyler Turner, and number two, Dan Rodriguez. Kicking off for the Spartans, number 15, Brian Wood. It's a, kind of a pooch kick fielded by number 19. Vern Hayward. Vern Hayward takes the ball back to the 45. That was a nice catch and a nice return, John. Yes, it was. He, he had the presence to wrap that ball up nice and tight and take off immediately, get what you can. Don't. That's the whole thing. Those up guys are not, you know, your deep men practice on finding holes in this net. If you're up close, you get that ball, you go straight ahead. You don't go looking for little holes, try to make the touchdown runs. It's probably not going to happen. Just get it up as far as you can, and Vert did an excellent job on that one, getting it up to us over the 45-yard line. Handoff goes to Chuha up the middle, and he meets a host of Spartan defenders. Back to the original line of scrimmage, but probably not much more than that. Yeah, I'd say they're going to mark it just about back at the line of scrimmage there. As uh, all of a sudden, the Spartan teams, their jitters are gone. They're, they're into playing football now, and we definitely have a ball game here. What started out a little ugly at the beginning has settled down, and we got a good high school football game going on. Second 10 for the Hilltoppers from their own 45-yard line. Kevin takes the snap. Again, the handoff goes up the middle to Chuha, and again, he goes right into the heart of the Spartan defense. A good five, six yards out of that. Let's see where they actually spot it. One thing you have to admire about Luke Chuha, John, is his legs are constantly yes, in movement that, every time he touches the football. That's the key to being a good running back. Just, uh, you know, a lot of times you're going to get hit there, but if you keep those legs moving and driving, you could just break the arm tackles off of those and just uh, move forward. If nothing else, you pump them to drive forward and stretch yourself out. Kevin takes the snap and runs the option, keeps the ball, and is tripped up by number 18, Matt Akers, for the Springfield Spartans. Was that Akers? I thought it was 23 Jason Adams on that one. They caught him from behind there. But whoever it was came up quick, came from the backside there and just tracked down Kevin and uh, actually, what, a yard, yard and a half loss on that play as we come to fourth down and right up just short of the midfield strike. Fourth and six for the Hilltoppers. Parrish again back to punt. Back to receive for the Spartans are number 21, Edwards, and number 19, Huddleston. Nice Beautiful kick. punt. Nice kick. Good hang time. Edwards man. catches the ball, comes to the near sideline. Brought nice down with tackle. a nice open field tackle by number 19, Vern Hayward. That's two nice plays in a row by Vern. Oh, right now he's the, the specialist on the special teams because he's made two outstanding plays out there. Yeah, he held his ground, held that corner, saw Edwards coming to him. Edwards put a couple little jukes on him. Vern says, uh-uh, he ain't biting on those. Made a good open field tackle on a runner that I don't think you want to allow free. I Absolutely just have a not. feeling that he could do some fancy dancing out there. Especially but, uh, down the sideline. Vern wasn't in the mood for dancing. He wanted to tackle. First and 10 for the Spartans from their own 26. Huddleston takes the handoff and gives it to Edwards. 
And we had Housen had penetration that time, got him in the background, kind of slowed him up, and uh, Matt Albright came up and finished him off up at the line of scrimmage there. Gain of maybe two on the play. Second eight for Springfield from their own 26 yard line, 418 remaining in the second quarter. We have a timeout being called here. I'll tell you one improvement, we have this scoreboard, which is just phenomenal. It gives, it's a good message board. It's a cheerleader almost, because you're getting all these defense chants, you know, the touchdown chants and all this other good stuff. There you see the scoreboard, and that looks nothing like most of the high school scoreboards you're going to oh, see around is, the state of Ohio. This is a grand one. I'll tell you, the one facet of it I appreciated that I, it drove me nuts on the other one. They did not list the timeouts left. And, you know, so we kind of sit here, what, they got one left, two? <laughs> do, do you remember? It's wrong. Right. They used one on that. Oh, that's right. You know, so we're playing guesswork. There's no more guesswork. You look up there, timeouts left, two. There's the old scoreboard. That's what we're talking about. Looks kind of lonely over there got, by itself, yeah, doesn't it, John? Yeah, it's kind of sad in a way. I mean, it <laughs> served us well. Don't don't get me wrong. There's a lot of memories through that scoreboard, but this is the place where new memories and uh, new traditions are going to begin. We're back to the action here. Second eight for Springfield. And the handoff goes to number 40. Patterson, the fullback, big fullback there. And, He's uh, stacked up for no gain or possibly even a loss. Yeah, John Housen shot in from his linebacker position there and just wrapped him up tightly. Dropped him, yeah, in the backfield for a yard, yard and a half loss. So we come down to third and 10, maybe just a hair shy of 10, but we'll call it 10. This is a good opportunity for the Chardon defense. Yes. They can get a stop here in the ball back. You can possibly get a score by the end of the half. Huddleston back to pass, tucks the ball down, cuts up the middle to the near sideline. Looks like he gets to the first down and is met by a host of Chardon tacklers. And I think John I Huddleston think. was able to get past the first yes, down mark. I believe he did. It crossed over it again. He had to get just up to the line, I believe, and he actually crossed it just a hair. If somebody had a hand on it, but Huddleston's got that quick spin. As soon as you touch him, he spins. Watch, you've got a handful of jersey there, but I, I think he's too strong a running back to bring him as, yeah, he crosses over the line easily, easily over the line. Huddleston's got a nice arm, John, but he's <laughs> under a lot of pressure back there, and we haven't seen him actually been able to throw too many passes. Yeah, I don't think you're going to, you know, until they can nullify that up front stuff, I don't think you're going to see much in the way of uh, passing from him, because when you're, under that much pressure, you know, you're, you, one, you start getting the happy feet, and the other one, well, you just don't have the time for your pass patterns to develop. Gain of three on the last play for Brian Patterson, which brings up second and seven for Springfield. Yeah, so winding down, under three minutes now. We got 2.48 left in this first half on the new field. That's the history-making game, as we'll call it. Springfield in the shotgun, Huddleston takes the snap, tucks it down, puts his head down, and gets back to the line of scrimmage. I'm guessing that formation must, you know, because it was strictly a run. So I'm guessing the reason they put him in the shotgun was to try to get the linebackers to make that initial drop, thinking pass, get the secondary drop a bit. Hopefully the upfront guys can open something, but it just didn't happen that time. Springfield in the no huddle offense. He's going down. He's covered well. Good Incomplete coverage. Incomplete pass. Some outstanding coverage by number 22, Tyler Turner. Yeah, he was step for step. He had him fronted there. So the only problem he was going to have was if it was an underthrown pass. But Huddleston had plenty of air under that. And there was no opportunity there for the Spartan defender to get under or receiver to get underneath that ball. So we get the fire it up sign on the scoreboard there. we got to keep watching. It's just, it's all new, you know, it's like, <laughs> we haven't seen the full repertoire of graphics. That brings up fourth and six for Springfield. And they will drop into punt formation. Back for the Hilltoppers, Rodriguez and Battles. Just They're over two minutes left. Tyler Turner almost got to that punt as well. 
Ball rolls Ooh, down to boy, the 24. Boy, did get a nice bounce there. Did you see that? I sure did. Trail right along the sidelines. One of the interesting things about this field, John, is when that ball hits, there's a little, almost like a cloud. And uh, in talking with some of the, uh, the people that are close to the project, that those are actually rubber pellets that are flying into the air. Yeah, they actually uh, drop them in there and roll them underneath. It's a filler. It's going to harden eventually. But, uh, you know, the newness and the feel, uh, theoretically, this wasn't ready to be played on completely the way it should be for another two, three weeks. But, uh, you know, you got the season. I mean, it's playable. I'm not saying it's not playable. But uh, it's not 100% set up like it's going to be. First and 10 for the Hilltoppers. 156 remaining in the first half. Big lay. Nice block. Number seven, Dan Merritt with a beautiful run. Takes the ball up near midfield. Yeah, he had a super block in that one. Vito Conforti coming out of his guard position there, led that one, just opened up a nice little corner block there, held up his guy real nice. Merritt cut behind him, took it down for a nice gain as we get 147 left. Great clock management by the Hilltoppers, John, in high school football, as you know, they stopped the <laughs> clock to move the chains and the they Hilltopper the offense right. was already there before the chains were, so they're, they're using every second, excellent job. Oops. Kevin rolls out to the nice. far side. Wide open pass. Great throw by Ben. Just over the outstretched hands. Jeremy Reynoso was the receiver, intended receiver on that. He was wide open. That was a nice job by Kevin, too, because he had a guy coming in on his outside. One little step in, and he avoided him. That's all you need to do. You don't need this great blinding speed run around him at all. If you got the presence to know when to just change their angle they're coming at you at a certain angle change it get out of the way and they just fly right by you and that's exactly what Kevin did on that one was able to throw the pass it just unfortunately wasn't able to be pulled in second 10 from the 49 yard line minute and a half left in the first half Kevin goes right back to Reynoso and this time they hook up taking the ball down to the Spartans 45 yard line Good. 123 left in the half that's the type of play I like to see I like to see tight ends brought into it I especially like to see where somebody drops one they know you, you can catch. You come right back to them saying, hey, we got confidence in you. And exactly. Reynoso comes through good on that. Good grab, good pass. Here we go, yep. third and five. <coughs> Kevin drops back to pass again, rolls out to his right, sets, throws the ball over the middle. Oof. And we have a couple of flags down on the play. That may be offensive interference on that. I think Dan Rodriguez kind of came through him. So that could be called offensive pass interference. It almost looked like. Uh, but that was a good job. Rodriguez he, became a, a defender almost yes, on this yes. play. And he did pretty much what he, if not, it probably would have been intercepted. As we see, yeah, you can see he's hitting them before the ball has arrived. And the defender has as much opportunity or right to catch the ball as the offensive guy does so in that case uh, you know they kind of reverse roles and uh, Rodriguez just did the pass interference which really was a smart play because it would have been picked off yeah, it's the good news bad news situation the bad news is they mark off 15 yards on you the good news is you still have the football yes yes and that theoretically you're gonna put them further down the field than the punt so we got 57 seconds left in this first half of What's been started out sloppy, but it's turning into a good, solid play game by both teams now. Fourth and long for the Hilltoppers. And Parrish is back to punt. Back to receive for Springfield, Huddleston, and Edwards. Plenty of time to punt. That's a beautiful spiral kick. Edwards fields it on his own 26-yard line, cuts up, and takes the ball back out to the 31-yard line. Okay, you got uh, Painter and um, Adam Kramer in on that tackle there. As they kind of did exactly what you got to do with a dangerous runner like Edwards. Get on him as soon as he touches it. Don't give him a chance to do nothing. And they were on top of it, running downfield real quick, getting there and stopping him pretty much in the tracks where he received it. First and 10 for Springfield. 14-7 Chardon lead, 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Handoff goes to number 40, Patterson for Springfield. He takes the ball up to almost the 40-yard line. 
Yeah, again, John Housen was in on that. He's got a lot of tackles tonight. Between him and Albright, they got a ton of tackles. Ball's placed on the 39-yard line. That makes it second and three. 20 seconds remaining in the first half. They're winding out this. Possibly could be the last play of the half, unless they air it out. Well, he's taking his time. It looks like they're happy to go in with a 14-7. Huddleston cuts it back up the middle, brings it toward the near sideline. Side Good tackle. A great hit by 22, Tyler Turner. Good open field tackle there. That was just as soon as that half ends. Now there's a flag down the field. We'll have to see who it's 67, called. 67, Brian Landy's also in on the tackle. If it's called on the defense, then we'll have another play here. If it's on the offense, well, it's on the defense because they're talking to the offensive team. They're talking to Edwards at the moment. So we will have another play in this half. Huddleston tucks the ball back in there and Huddleston brings it right good back solid toward runner. us. Good tackle by Tyler Turner there. As he fights off the blocker, goes through him, and just drives back into him on what's obviously not an easy kid to bring down because Huddleston's doing some phenomenal running today. Now they're going in for halftime, I guess. So whatever the call was, uh, the fact remains that the first half has ended with Chardon leading 14-7. We'll be back after this.
Horns up. You guys, listen! Watch!
Welcome back to Chardon Memorial Field. We're back for the start of the second half. An excellent display, John, by both of the marching bands. They're in uh, mid-season form already. In terms of the game, the first half was really a, a matter of fumbles. Oh, sure. All three scores came off of turnovers. Luckily for the Hilltoppers, they had two additional ones, and they have the 14-7 to 7 advantage right here. Now we go into what do they see during the first half up in the booths? What do the coaches come up with? What strategies they come up with for the defenses to change, stop the other team, offenses to get going even better than they were going. We got a great half of football coming out here. This is one area, as you mentioned, John, where the Shard staff, uh, in my opinion, has a great advantage because as most people know, this is Coach Doyle's 22nd year. But what some people may not know is that a lot of his uh, staff has been with him for a quite a long time. You know, you know what happened? Remember at the end of the half, there was that flag? It was a personal foul on Chardon. They're marking it off. It was after the half was over. They're, so they're marking it off here. They'll be kicking from the Chardon 45. So this should be uh, pretty much to the goal line kick, I would assume. That explains that confusion at the end yeah. of the half. Kick goes down to 22. Tyler Turner, he fields it cleanly. Cuts got up the lane. middle. He's got a lane. He cuts back to the middle and takes the ball out to... The 25-yard line. Nifty return, John. Yeah, that was a good job. I mean, normally 25 isn't that good, but when you're kicking it from your own 45 there, uh, you'll take it out at any time. You will take that every single time. First and 10 for the Hilltoppers from their own 25-yard line. 11.52 to go in the third quarter. We're just starting off here. If you're just joining us, Chardon has a first half lead of 14-7. Yeah, we'll see what they've seen and see what kind of adjustments in their play calling they do. As Eric Smith gets a call. Goes off to the right side of the line. Gets past the line of scrimmage by a yard or two. There was a little lane open up. If Eric could have seen it and looked to his left more towards the middle of the field, it was open up there. If he had cut it back and taken it back against the grain coming to the middle there, I think he could have got some good yardage out of that. Gain of two, second eight for Chardon from their own 27-yard line. Boy, John, as you look around the field now, you can really appreciate uh, the lighting system. It's phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Kevin runs the option, brings it to the near side, keeps the ball, gets back maybe to the original line of scrimmage. That was a good job by Patterson. He keyed on Kevin. Somebody took the pitch man out there, so he... In essence, they took away the option that time as the pitch man was covered. Kevin saw that, knew he had to just eat the ball, and Patterson just came up strong on him, sealed it up, and we got a third and long situation. Uh, call it a, a long eight. Hayward split out to the far side of the field. Kevin hands off to Luke Chuha who gets up near the first down marker. This is going to be an interesting spot. I think where he's got it spotted there, he's above it. It looks like he made it by about a foot. They'll probably eyeball that and see it. Yes, they did. I don't think that was in measurable distance. As they open up a nice little lane on the left side, we'll have to see if we can pick up the numbers on this replay of who's leading it. You got Linville, nice, penetrating through there. Just good blocking up front on that left side of that Chardon line there as they uh, open up a lane and Chua just drove ahead into it. Linville showed some nice mobility on that play, pulling and, uh, and creating that hole. Coming from the right tackle position. Even. First and 10, Kevin back to pass, the ball's deflected and falls incomplete. Yeah, he was looking for Tyler Turner and the quick dump out there, but uh, somebody got the big paw up, at, up in uh, the line of scrimmage area there and was able to just tip it out of reach. They'll bring up a second and 10. Chardon ball from their own 36 yard line. Yeah, I'll tell you the Spartan defense, they got good size up front, but the rest of it's not big, but they swarm real, real well. They got good, seem they have good team speed out there and they, they rotate over and feed on the ball real quick. One thing you have to like John is the way Matt McCummins comes out of that huddle. I mean, Matt is just charging up to that ball every single time. That's some great uh, enthusiasm that sets the tone. Ball deflected again on the pass. Again, falling incomplete. 
I think in essence, they call the same play over again. Looked like they went right back to the same play. I think they want to isolate Tyler out there in a one-on-one -on -one situation, let him use his quickness to try to break it. But uh, they're getting that penetration coming around the, the right side of their offense there. And uh, I think it was the same guy, number 30, uh, what, what could be his name? Larry Burge. Larry Burge. Larry Burge getting in there, and I think it was the same player that uh, tapped on that one as we come to third and ten now. They must have seen a weakness possibly on that side of the Springfield defense. Brings third and ten. Ball still on the Chardon, 36. Kevin back to pass, tucks it in, throws the ball down the middle of the field. T intended for number one, Eric Smith. Eric's looking for an interference call. And that was Mark Huddleston, the quarterback, playing at the safety position there. Had good coverage on that one, knocked it down. So watch on the replay here. I don't believe, I think it was just a well-timed hit on that one. We have to see if it looks a little early in the replay. Nice ball fake by Ben Kevin. Nah, well maybe the left hand was there. It's hard to tell on that one. Possibly could have been. Play. But it was shielded. <laughs> if it was a little interference, he covered it up from the referee real well. Another fine punt by Parrish, fielded at the 34 by Edwards. He cuts back the middle of the field, and he fumbles the I football. I think Chardon got it, too. I think that's a Chardon ball. Saw a black shirt diving on top of it. He's got a little fighting underneath there. It's Nick Schuyler came up with that one. Number 36, Nick Schuyler, a sophomore, comes up with that fumble and it will be Chardon football. That's the, another nice break for the Hilltoppers. We'll have to see who made the initial hit. He just kind of stumbled around and was swinging that ball loose. I think John Housen is at 43. John yeah, Housen, is. 43, he's been all over the field tonight. Yeah, he has, but that was a case of uh, Edwards was swinging that ball like a loaf of bread out there. You gotta keep that thing tucked away, especially when you start stumbling like he did. Good recognition by Nick Schuyler to jump on that fumble. Chardon football. Nice. Pass over the middle. Nice. Intended for number two, Dan Rodriguez. Complete, and the ball gets down to about the 10-yard line. That was a beautiful pass. That was just a nice little steep slant over there. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, Kevin put that ball right on the money. Hit him at straight. Had the defenders behind it, threw it low around Rodriguez's waist, where Rodriguez is the only one that can really get to that ball. Watch. See, it's down there, he catches it there, the defender's behind him. You don't want to get that ball up in the air when the defender has a chance to get to it. Kept a low trajectory on that, Rodriguez tucked it in. Chardon's got it going here again after the turnover. Again, another turnover puts Chardon right on the doorstep again. You talk to coaches, whether they be NFL coaches, college coaches, high school coaches, and they always talk about uh, game-making plays and turnovers inevitably come into that conversation. Tonight is a perfect example of that. This is the third turnover, that uh, positive turnover for Chardon, and uh, once again, they're on the 10 or 11 yard line, knocking on the door once more. Yeah, as we have that first and, well, not goal, but first and 10 on the 11 yard line. We have a timeout on the field which gives me time to remind you that uh, high school sports is just part of our programming lineup this fall. Sports coverage continues all fall long as we cover Berkshire, Cardinal Notre Dame Cathedral Latin, and Chardon sports, including volleyball, soccer, and more football. So check GTV regularly for replay dates and times, county fair highlights, candidates nights, and school fall programs. All of this in addition to the community bulletin board service provided 24 hours a day on GTV. Yeah, I tell you, GTV, Dave Jevnikar does a tremendous job with that. It's just an asset to this community and uh, just part of that community spirit thing. It's, it's like local programming that expands around uh, the little area here of uh, Joggett County, you know, Middlefield and uh, Burton and Shards. First yes. and 10, the handoff goes up the middle to Luke Chuha, and he scores his third touchdown of the night. That was just a big lane opened up in there again. Chuha just walked into it. Well, a quick walk, but he, <laughs> it was a wide open just trail into the end zone there. Good up front blocking. I guess you gotta, that, you gotta that, hand it to the offensive line there, John. That hole was a mile wide. Yeah, I think I could have got a yard or two out of that. <laughs> I honestly got to. At least back to the line of scrimmage. Possibly, possibly so. Might have not got up afterwards, but I could have got to the line of scrimmage. 
Nate Davis in to attempt the point after. With the hold of number 12, Mike. Andy Island. I'm sorry, Andy Islandfield. Islandfield puts the ball down, the kick is up, and just a little bit wide right. I don't know, did somebody get a hand on it? It kind of had a funny flight to it, or if it was just a flat footed hit. It was close, but just a little bit wide right. That makes the score Chardon 20 and Akron Springfield 7. I think this next series will be a, uh, a telling one for, for Springfield. Uh, they need to get a drive going if, if you're a Springfield fan, similar to how they did in the second half, to uh, get some momentum going. Oh, yeah. At least uh, move the stakes a couple times. Try to get a little bit of field position back, because if you get yourself pinned back here and Chardon gets their ears back a little bit, it could be an ugly second half for them. You know, we mentioned the lights earlier. A couple interesting uh, items about the lights. Uh, the new lights will generate between 65 and 90 foot candles of light. You're the color man, John. Can you tell us what a candle of light is? Well, it depends on the candle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have a clue. Do I look like an electrician or what? Uh, you, I don't know. You, you owe me one for that one. I, know, I, I don't have an idea. I on tug that on the switch. That's all I know about electricity. <laughs> Just to give you a frame of reference, 65 to 90 foot candles of light for the new lights in the former stadium. The lights provided 15 to 20 foot candles of light. So we're almost three times uh, the, the I, I assume that's some type of power behind the, the lights. And you can see the field is, is extremely well lit. OK, is that a linear? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm an English teacher. That's as far as I'm going okay. with that discussion. Not, not going there, not are you? Not going any farther than that. <laughs> OK. Well, we're back to football now. <laughs> we'll have a better chance explaining some football than candles of light. Yes, yeah, so we'll get a technical expert here, an expert witness, if you will. There's the kick. It's in the air. It's a nice high end over end kick. Did he step out of bounds? He did step out of bounds. He fielded it at about the 16 yard line and stepped out at the 20, according to the official. Just a hair short of the 20, I believe, is where he had that mark. That was a break. And that's not, uh, that feels not really crowned. It, you know, there's some that are crowned so bad the sideline's going to suck you right off the field. This isn't the case. This is relatively about as flat a field as you're going to play on any place. So, uh, it was just kind of momentum was shifted off that way. That's what pulled them out of bounds. Good break for Chardon on that one. That gives the ball to Akron Springfield at their own 20, first and 10, 9.24 remaining in the third period. Chardon 20, Akron Springfield 7. Long count by Huddleston this time. Takes the snap and hands off to Patterson. Yeah, Patterson. It's just shy of the 25. So close to a five yard gain on that one. It's just straight up the middle power football. Which is probably not a bad idea. It's kind of settle them down. Nothing fancy where you could drop the ball. Give it to your sure handed fullback who just runs hard. Low risk. And he seems to have good solid hand. He hasn't put the ball down yet today. So that, that's a good way to move the stakes a little bit. Second and five for the Spartans. They go right back. No, Huddleston kept it that time. And well, he gets back to the line of scrimmage, some excellent pursuit down the line. I think he might have lost a little bit. Let's see where they mark it, actually. I don't think he got up to the 20. Oh, Number gotta, 40, Dan Painter in on the tackle there. Yeah, they got it marked about the 24. We call that a loss of one on that one. That's some good eyes. Should have gave it two patters, I think. He would at least got back to the line of scrimmage. Third and six for the Spartans from their own 24-yard line. Well, I'm guessing this would be a rollout, uh, possibly pass run option for Huddleston. That would be my guess of their play calling on this one. Chardon defense adjusts. Huddleston That's drops straight, straight back, pump fakes, sends the ball down the near sideline. Just out of the outstretched hands of number 11, Mike Kelvington. That was a good pass, because I think Huddleston felt Dan Painter coming in on the blitz, because as soon as he released it, Painter was on him, and he gave him a good shot, and Huddleston's a tough kid. He took a good, solid shot from the side, bounced right up. You can see on the uh, screen there that Kelvington slapped his helmet. He could get the impression he thought he should have had that ball. That was a well-thrown pass. Huddleston's a good, solid quarterback. 
No question about that. Fourth and six for the Spartans. Huddleston back to punt, back to receive for the Hilltoppers, Rodriguez and Battles. Low snap, fielded well by Huddleston, end over end punt. Battles takes the ball on his own 46, comes to the near side of the field, cuts the ball up and dives up to about the 47 yard line. That, they were setting up the wall left that time, but it was very porous and the players were just pouring through. It didn't really form properly. Nice job by Battles to turn a potential loss uh, from where he fielded at least into a, a gain of a yard or two. Sure. Great position for the Hilltoppers. They're going to start this drive on the 40, almost the 48 yard line. Here comes McCummins charging out of the huddle. I think you're just going to see a lot of Chuha here. I think this is going to be just straight ahead, a hand to the fullback, pull an occasional option with Kevin going up, or he could go oh, right to the air. Or he could go back to pass. Nice pass broken up by Huddleston, right. and the flag is thrown after the play. It looks like it's defensive interference, much to hey. the chagrin of the I'd Springfield like, staff. I'd like to see a replay of that, to be quite honest with you. I think they have some contested. I, I didn't think he went over his back. I, I, I thought it was just a good defensive play. Let's see if there actually is interference. Another nice ball by Ben Kevin. I, I don't see contact right there. I don't think so. It's pretty from, good defensive from, it's play. It's tough to say from that angle, though, I didn't see the pass interference. If there was an interference, it must have been with the body because his hands looked like they were uh, and the flag free was, and clear. Flag was thrown behind him, so he must have thought that there was body contact. Well, break for Chardon or? If you're a Hilltopper fan, you don't question it. You just say, yep. step it off. Yep. Seven thirty-eight remaining in the third quarter. Chardon looking to extend their 20 to seven lead. Trying to figure out where to mark the ball at. Officials oh. marking it off. That was a slow march off. There we go, we're down at the 25 yard line or more. I guess 25 wasn't good. How about the 22? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? I think, I think he lost I count know. there. Is that 12 or 13 I'm stepping yeah, on? I'm going to have to. Cross check there. there might, <laughs> might be a two tier penalty for some reason. Who knows? Check the new rules for this. They come up with some bizarre ones. Here comes the handoff to the near side. Number seven, Dan Merritt. Takes the ball past the line of scrimmage of a gain of about two, I would say, down near the 20 good yard job. line. We had both guards pulling on that. Nick Weber and Vito Conforti did a good job leading there. Merritt did a good job running his hand on the back of. I believe it was Weber and kind of directing him, playing off it. Again, moving forward as he's doing it. That's what ball carriers have to loot. You don't stand there and juke in position or go back or nothing like that. Keep him moving forward. Wait for it to happen in front of you. Kevin has oh, a great fake open. with oh. a bootleg, takes it down. There's a couple flags on the yeah. play. Kevin is into the end zone. We'll have to stop and to see what the call is. I'm guessing it might be coming back. I'm, I'm guessing there was an illegal block in the corner. <coughs> Whatever the penalty might be, it, it doesn't negate what a great ball fake by Ben Kevin. He oh, had the entire much. he had the entire Springfield sucked defense to the sucked to the inside. Right. Watch this. See if we can see the infraction. It's got to be a legal block out there in the corner somewhere. Nothing so far. There comes the flag. I, I didn't see it. A hold. They okay. call a hold. Okay. Those, those officials have sometimes they have some great vision. They well, see things that mere mortals like you and I miss. The thing is, there were two flags thrown at the same time, and they both saw. So, you know, it's not a phantom one. Right. Both of those officials or they, apparently saw the same thing. Or they the planned it out in advance. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I can say. How's that for going back to Chardon's side? <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice, nice dance step you had there. That makes it about second and 22, 23. Kevin drops back to pass. Ball's thrown over the middle. Intended for Tyler Turner. Intercepted. Yep. Down at the 10 yard line by number 46, Scott Bergdorf. Yeah, well, if you're a Chardon optimist, that's as good as a punt because it still hasn't buried back way oh, in, yeah. in their own territory. Yeah, that was just good defensive coverage back there, and he just stepped right in front and took Kevin's pass away from Turner. 
Yep, just jumped right in front of him, read it real well, timed it out. Yeah, Scott like you Bergdorf. said, it kind of puts it on the, the offense, though. It puts a little burden of pressure on them because they got the ball deep now. 11-yard line, the ball spotted. 6.46 remaining in the third quarter. Chardon, 20. Akron Springfield, 7. Huddleston takes the snap, rolls out to the far side, escapes a couple of tackles, and is hammered by number 67. There was Brian Landis. Yep, he got hit by a couple of players there rather hard. And, uh, got about a yard, yard and a half gain out of that, but took a beating on He's going to feel that one tomorrow morning. He's a tough kid, though. He yeah. is, absolutely. He's a nice football player. The one that I'm sure would love a whirlpool after this <laughs> game because he has taken some big-time shots out there. That's a very hard-fought yard gain. Second nine for the Spartans. Huddleston drops back again, once again tucks the ball down. John Huddleston has had no time when he drops back, no. even when he rolls no. out. That Chardon defensive line is away. all over him. That was Linville and Landy's in on that one. Uh, Linville getting the initial hit, Landy's helping him finish it off. Yeah, like you said, uh, he dropped back, just starting to set his feet, and it was time to move forward because they were on him. Even the roll arts aren't buying in time. Those uh, defensive linemen, the down linemen, are just doing a great job. Yeah, he's doing it moving, quick feet, spin moves and stuff. That's where he's getting his yardage, but he doesn't have the setup time to be a pure drop back passer. They've taken that facet of the game away from Huddleston tonight. Third and eight for Springfield. Huddleston drops he's back. Dance again. He's got to dance again. Escapes a couple tackles. Brings the ball to the near side. He's got a chance at a first down. Tyler Turner runs him out of bounds. Close to the first down mark. It'll have to be an interesting spot to see where that uh, play ends up. I don't have a good enough angle to get a reading on it. Yeah, they're calling it a first, first down. down. You're always watching on the replay. See, again, he gets, he starts to set up. He's getting the pressure there. Got to move out. Albright had him wrap. Couldn't quite finish him off there. And then it's just pure athleticism that gets him outside. He's Turner, got some good speed. Turner just gets the wrong angle there. To Patterson takes the handoff on first down for Akron Springfield to the left side of the Springfield line and gets out past the 25 to the 26, according to the spot. Patterson's a hard-running fullback. He's a, he's a good-looking fullback. We get a couple of good fullbacks in this ballgame tonight. Absolutely. <laughs> Officials timeout. Looks like number 40, Dan Painter, lost his helmet. There it goes back on. We got a little substitution as uh, Jason Coyman's coming in for Brian Landis. Giving him a little spell there. Ball spotted on the 28 which brings a second and about seven for Springfield. 444 remaining in the third quarter. Huddleston with the snap, again tucks it up and goes up the middle of the line. Takes the ball out past the 30 to the 34 yard line. There's Painter in on that tackle. And Battles, I believe, uh, helped him out a little bit. This will be an interesting call, John. It's third and a long one. 418 remaining in the third quarter and Springfield's down by 13 points. Okay, we got a referee's timeout here for a second. Not sure. Oh, I think uh, somebody had They're going to think it over. I think they credited that timeout to Akron Springfield. They, they must just understand. called one. Yeah, there was a referee timeout for a hair there. This is a uh, a big play and the Springfield coaching staff and the team are going to talk it over. As many of you know, the Count on Me campaign began in earnest just this past January. Although there has been a tremendous amount accomplished thus far, there are still major challenges ahead. Now pledge, or I'm sorry, new pledges are still needed. For those of you who have pledged, we would ask that if you haven't sent in your first installment, that you please do so at this time. If you're able to accelerate or increase your participation now that you've seen what a fantastic community facility this will be, please, by all means, do so. There is still a tremendous amount of work to do. We appreciate your support thus far and encourage you to help out as much as you can. If you'd like some in more information, you can write to the Count On Me, or, or Count On, Can We Count On You, I'm sorry, at P.O. Box 798, Chardon, Ohio, 
44024. That's Can We Count On You, P.O. Box 798, Chardon, 44024. Okay, and here they come back to the lines. Tell you the truth, I just go straight ahead. Either give it to Patterson or sneak it yourself. They need a first down. Absolutely. It's reaching a point in the game where uh, Springfield, if they want to get back into it, they've got to start making their move. The only way you can do that is keep the ball with a first down. Long count, trying to draw the Hilltoppers offside. Great discipline by the Hilltoppers. And he's stacked up right away. Huddleston's uh, pointing though. toward first down, but it'll be an interesting spot here. No, I think he got it. That was uh, given to Edwards. That, that kind of surprised me. I don't even need to measure that. They are calling first down. I don't went, like I said, I had to snuck it or giving it to the bruising fullback for that uh, two feet you needed. The nose of the football is directly on the 35 yard line. Be that as it may, first down and 10 for the Akron Springfield Spartans. 355 remaining in the third period. Chardon 20, Springfield seven. Huddleston takes the snap. Reverse pivots, brings the ball to the near side, gets out near the 40-yard line. Brought down on the play by number 40, Dan Painter. Yeah, they're, they're making a good drive here. and it, It's not exactly panic time. We got a whole quarter and three and a half minutes left. So they can afford the luxury of a nice drive, but uh, keeping the stakes moving is good, but they gotta keep doing it. If you're gonna have the long drive, you gotta score off of it, because you're eating a lot of time, which is Chardon's luxury right now. Handoff goes to Patterson. He stacked up very near the yard of scrimmage, or the line of scrimmage, rather. Gain of one, possibly, yeah, gain of one. It's about third and four. Third and four. Yeah, again, another big play. You know, where they want to keep these chains moving. So it's a, again, it's a big play, too, for that Chardon defense. So back into it, and uh, you know, they do have a varied offense. You're not sure, it does center on Huddleston a whole bunch. Yeah, you know, he's, he's the main in. man, you almost, a guy that's worthy of having a spy at him. He oh. rolls out to this side and is thrown for a loss. Right. Met by number 33, Kevin Neal, hit him square on and knocked him back a couple of yards after the point of contact. And I think uh, half of his teammates were in on that one. Yeah, there might've been two shards of kids that didn't get a piece of them. Because that time he just got stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. Because we're watching the replay, you see, like, it, no, I guess we won't watch the replay. We've changed our mind here. <laughs> As they come back, we get the fourth down play. They're going to be punting. Huddleston which is, back to punt, which is what the Hilltopper fans are looking for. Rodriguez and Battles back to receive. Low snap, he drops it, picks it up, and does get the kick away. It's a short but high end over end punt that lands at the 37, bounces backward, and is down very quickly by number 30, Larry Burge. And the spot will be the 36. I guess it's the 36. No, it should be further up than that. It should be about that looks the 38 better. or that looks 39. I mean, that, 39. Yeah, they're, they're bringing it up there. That's the right spot. 145 remaining in the third quarter. Yeah, that one, Chardon was setting up pure return on that one. They, they went back. That's why you had the luxury of being able to drop it, pick it up, and still have time to get out because Chardon, in essence, had no rush on him at all. First and 10 for the Hilltoppers from their own 39-yard line. Luke Chuha up the middle. He's got major real estate in front of him, and he gets inside the 35 to about the 33 or 32. Great run, John. Oh, yeah, that just opened up on that right side of the line. Uh, Vito Conforti, Brian Linville, I believe, are on that side. And they just opened up a huge gaping hole for him. Look at that lane open up. See Eric Smith giving a nice block from his wing back position there, too, at the point of attack, taking the end out of the play. Huge lane. And you are not going to arm tackle Luke yes, Chuha. Once you've got that bull in motion, <laughs> get out of the way. The arm tackles are not going to get the job done. Kevin has the ball. Uh, tries to escape the penetration by Springfield. There are just too many of them that got across the line that time. Kevin thrown for a loss back to the 35, which will bring up second and a long 13. One minute remaining in the third quarter. Yeah, that time, uh, 
blocking broke down a little bit and Kevin really didn't have much opportunity to get motion there. Eric Smith in motion. Kevin takes the handoff, plays blown dead. One flag down on the play, but I heard a lot of whistles, so that play is blown dead. We'll see what yeah, the call is. The far side here, so I think somebody was in legal motion. The legal procedure against the Hilltoppers, they'll mark off five yards, takes the ball back out to the 40, which brings up second and long. I think what happened that time is, like you said, they had Smith set in motion. I think one of the other backs made a little bit of a hitch there. And consequently, that boils down to being two guys in motion. That's the procedure penalty. Second 18 for the Hilltoppers. This is probably going to be the final play of the third quarter. I think it's at 22 seconds, unless we have a pass that looks like the same the play. Smith in motion. Kevin rolls out to his right. Got him open. Throws the pass to Tyler Turner, wide open. He takes the ball down to the 20, and a flag Ooh. almost after the play. Uh, Turner went down funny. I'm wondering if we got a face mask coming on this, because he kind of flipped around when he was taking. No, called it a clip. They called a clip on that. Looked nope. like Coach Doyle went right back to the same play. We had Turner, in, or I'm sorry, Smith in motion again. Kevin faked and rolled out to the same side of the field. They must have seen something there that they could capitalize on. Let's see well, what let's it is. Let's see, there was another player, right? Because they called it right where the tackle was made. There was another Chardon player there, and that's what they're calling the clip on. We have to Look how wide watch open Tyler Turner is. Oh, yeah, that was a nice run pattern. Oh, yeah, pushing the back. Yep. You could just see the pushing. That, it was a right call, no question. They're going to mark it off from this, the Body point the of the infraction. foul. Right. Which will bring the ball. So Chardon gains on that, but doesn't gain to the extent they hoped. After it's all said and done, the Hilltoppers gain about four and a half yards. And that will not be the final play of the third quarter. Nope, we got 11 seconds. Uh, this is Second and 15. This should about do it, though. They started the clock and uh, the third quarter winds down. At the end of three quarters, the score remains Chardon 20, Akron Springfield 7. We'll be back for the fourth quarter right after this. We're back here at Shard Memorial Field for the start of the fourth quarter. Hilltoppers ball leading 20 to seven, second and 13 from their own 35. Chuha takes the ball up the middle. He's breaking away, he gets down inside the 10 to about the seven yard line. An excellent way if you're a Hilltopper fan, John, to start the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's uh, kind of the way you designed it. Except I think Doyle wanted six more yards <laughs> out of that one. That's how you draw them up. You draw every play up to go all the way. But he'll accept that one. Because again, those stakes are going to be moving, and uh, we got a first and goal from the six for Shard. 29 yard gain for Luke Chuha on the play. Oh, I never thought about that. They should be going the other way. 
<laughs> they didn't reverse the I sides of the field. I don't think the officials field. thought about no. that either. No. No, they ran it the now wrong way. Now here's the question: You have does that that play has to stand, right? I would think so. I don't think that you changed can, anything. I don't think they have redos in no. high school fo varsity football, no. do they, John? No. Oh, they were calling that a third quarter play. Okay, they put 12 minutes back up on the clock, and I guess we'll start the fourth quarter from about the six yard line. I don't Interesting series of events there. I don't really understand why, unless that clock should have been started when it was with that 11 seconds left on it, where they burned it off without running a play. That's the only thing. I don't know why there was that extra play there. Well, the clock read 11:52 when they stopped it to move the chains. And then the officials apparently realized that they had forgotten to switch ends and are doing so right now. And they have 12 minutes back up on the clock. Let's take a look at the replay here and, and watch uh, Luke Chuha take the ball. Continued out the field. Yeah, he just kind of weed his way. That, that's just good open field running. You got Huddleston grabs him from behind and just hog ties him. Once <laughs> again, there's Luke Chuha getting five or six yards after Oh, point sure. of contact. Carrying an extra 190 pounds or whatever Huddleston <laughs> weighs. Okay. This is the official start of the fourth quarter. First and goal from the Hilltop, for the Hilltoppers from the six or seven yard line. Knocking on the door, looking to potentially blow this game open. Handoff goes right back to Chuha up the middle. Looks like he gets inside the five yard line. Yeah, I have to agree with you here. A score right here will really put the hurts to Springfield because that'll put them three scores down, and that, that's a tough thing to do against short defenses. I think Luke Chuha is going to get an awful lot of work right here. Fourth quarter, you have a lead. You're on second and goal from the five or six yard line. Plus, it's about time he's got a touchdown. You know, he's only got three <laughs> on the evening. Right. Yeah, he needs to pad his stats a little bit. Kevin calls out the cadence, keeps the ball, and is thrown for a loss by number 18, Matt Akers. Yeah, he's back to almost the 10 yard line, which are being up a third and goal from the 10. Nice penetration by Akers on the play. We'll bring up a third and goal. Interesting to see what Coach Doyle calls here. I wonder if we'll go to the air or if we just try to run it down their throats twice. This first play will tell with the mentality. He's going to the air. Got him open. Oh. It was in his hands momentarily, apparently not quite long enough. No, nope, he wasn't able to control it and pull it in completely. I believe that was Adam Kramer on the reception attempt that time. Let's look at the replay. It looked like he had the ball in his hands for a split second, but was not quite able to hang on. Nope, it, it hit right through his hands. Went right to the turf through his hands. He never really did have it. That's a proper call by the referee. And the official, as you can see, is there, right there on top of here's it. Here's the first field goal attempt in the new stadium. Trivia fans can write this one down. Nate Davis attempting. Kick is up, and it is good right down the middle so you trivia buffs out there can write this down at the 10 33 mark of the fourth quarter the first field goal in the new chardon memorial stadium by number 16 nate davis that extends the chardon lead to 23 7. that's an important one because again that puts it in that three scores to get ahead of us category where before it was two you could take the lead now you got to get three of some sort Okay, let's see how good you are in your football trivia here. What kid caught the first field goal? <laughs> <laughs> I think his last name is Walsh. I, I, I have my binoculars on. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> yeah, it could be. There's hundreds of kids out there named Walsh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not touching that. Yeah, thank you. You don't want to say that it's a comfortable lead because if you're a, if you're a Oh, anything if you're Bob can Doyle, happen. nothing's comfortable. Anything can happen in high school football. But at the same time, as you mentioned, John, when you're up three touchdowns, uh, it gives it puts you in an enviable position, to well, say the least. Three scores. Three scores is what they got to come up with. Before, two touchdowns and the extra points would give you the lead. 
Now you got to do it three times. And for a Springfield team that has scored once, it's certainly not impossible, it's but it's definitely a challenge. Yeah, the Chardon defense has overall been playing well. They've had their little breakdowns here, there, but overall they've been playing well. Might be the bend, but don't break theory. 10.33 remaining in the fourth quarter. Nick Parrish set to kick off once again. Ball's fielded and dropped by number 30, Larry Burge, who recovers and takes the ball back out past the 20 to about the 22, it looks like. First and 10 from their own 22 yard. As again, field position is not the greatest for the Spartans. They're going to be starting deep in their territory. I don't know. It's it's they, they haven't been able to break away with the big play yet. The only way it seems like they can do that is pass, but they, he hasn't had the luxury of having time. So I think they're almost going to have to be forced to go to the air because they can't afford to have the long drives. You know, you can't have the five, six yard gains on the fullbacks and stuff. You're going to have to somehow or another hit the big play, and it probably through the air is the best route of that. Flag down on the play. Called against the Hilltoppers. Offsides. Yeah, I think somebody might have got the helmet in there because I really didn't see the movement going. I think they just lined up with their helmet inside the neutral zone. That'll make it first and five for the Spartans from their own 26-yard line. Huddleston barking out a long call. Drop straight back. Has a little bit of time to throw this time. The ball comes to the near side. Good. Defended Good. very well there by number two, Dan Rodriguez. He had his hands on the football there for a moment, John. Yeah, he went stride for stride with him. Kept him there, just in, uh, got in front. You know, the only way that ball would have had to been thrown well over where the runner could have run under it because he did have like a half step on it, but excellent, excellent coverage by Rodriguez on that one. The shard and pass defense tonight has been exceptional. Yeah, this one of two things seems like it's happened. Either Huddleston's under tremendous pressure or the backs are, are uh, on the receivers like glue. There's a quick out off the hands of number 23, Jason Adams. And again, it was read well. Rodriguez went over, had backup coverage there. His battles came up, read it, and came from the front side. So he had good double coverage coming into the zone area there. That brings up a third down and a long five for the Spartans. But again, like I'm saying, that's what they got to do. It's The clock is definitely uh, Springfield's enemy right now, and the pass is the quickest way to hit the plays. So they got to go to the air, even though they haven't had much success tonight it's the best route for them because they can't eat up clock not that far down on the scoreboard third and five for the spartans 10 minutes 20 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter chardon 23 springfield seven handoff goes up the middle to patterson he gets out to about the 30 yard line and that's going to bring up fourth down i guess the thought pattern on that one was the element of surprise. Hopefully <laughs> that everybody's dropping back, middle opens, he can get the first down, but Chardon sealed up the middle again, held him to a minimal game. Fourth and a long two. Yeah, it's maybe even three. Okay, now's where you gotta contain on the ends there, because we know how Huddleston runs, so you gotta make sure that, uh, you know, you seal off and there's no chicanery as they say there's the fake he's going he comes down the far side they didn't say don't seal the outside there good call coach walsh that's well that's a mistake that's uh, you got to seal those outsides there plus when especially when you got huddleston if you got a regular punter that's his whole function we know what huddleston does on the field as you watch it here he fakes the the kick a little bit just to freeze him a bit and as you can see, the, the back the side there is in. open. Rush came in from the inside. Yeah, the outside man rushing to the inside. They sealed him up there, opened the whole outside lane. Takes the ball out just shy of the 44-yard line for the Spartans and gives them new life. First and 10 from the 44, 9-11 remaining in the fourth quarter. If you're a Akron Springfields fan, you need to capitalize on this. 
Oh. You've gotten a break, you have new life, you need to take the ball down the field and get in the end zone. And fairly quick, too. You don't have the luxury of a slow wrist. Handoff that goes up the middle to Patterson, and he's met immediately by a host of Hilltoppers. A short gain on the play. Yeah, it's very short, maybe a yard at best. We'll give him a yard on that one. Because they read it pretty quick as they tried to do the quick slant off tackle with Patterson. It wasn't being bought there. As, uh, they held the ground and just shut him right down. Couldn't really see who was in on that tackle. The official spotted the ball at the original line of scrimmage, which will make it a second down, 10 yards to go. Huddleston takes the snap, drops back. Ball's thrown out to the flat. Pass is completed to number 30, Larry Burge, for a gain of seven on the play. Takes the ball right out to about midfield. Yeah, I think they got it marked right on the stripe there. Clock continues to run. We're now under eight minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you got to get those plays in. It's the point of good clock management's got to be going on right now because you can't be wasting 10 seconds in a huddle. You got to get those plays in, get that team to the line and start doing it because clock, every second ticks off, goes a Fumble on the play. Right it now. looks like number 67. Brian Landis was near the football. Let's see if he was able to get his hands on it. Chardon signaling yes, but I don't see the referee signaling. There's the referee says Chardon ball. Good job by Brian Landis of seeing the football and jumping on it. And that is another that, huge break for that, the Hilltoppers. That could be the nail in the coffin right there. I don't think not he never got the, he, that handoff was on his hip. Never got the ball into the pocket on that one. It was right on his hip. It was a quarterback just didn't plan. He did a reverse pivot, came around. It was an awkward handoff, never got it into the pocket. And Brian Landy's got those 238 pounds down to that ground to get on that football in a big hurry. First and 10 for the Hilltoppers. Ball is fumbled. Kevin jumps on the ball to cover it up. Ball goes back to the 42. Looked like the uh, Hilltoppers were going for the juggler there, John. Yeah, it did look like he was going back to pass a little bit there. I, I'm not sure what that. I think uh, Kevin just lost the handle on the ball, just dropped it. <laughs> There's no other explanation. What happened? He dropped it. <laughs> Seven minutes remaining, fourth quarter. Chardon on top, 23-7 on an absolutely gorgeous night here at the brand new Chardon Memorial Field. It is. Weather's terrific. It's a slight cool, but a pleasant cool out here. It's real nice short sleeve weather. Dick Godner couldn't have said that any better. <laughs> well, there. There's a run up the middle by Luke Chuha, covering a lot of ground, takes the ball down to the 30-yard line. He can get through that line extremely quick, John. Oh, yeah, especially when you give a hole to him. He's got quickness, there's no question. He doesn't have the straight-ahead burning speed, because you can see he gets caught from behind. But he's got that first step or two is just explosive. And then once he gets rambling, you better catch it from behind because you don't want to get in front of him. Another great job by the offensive line. They're starting to open up some big holes, and I think we talked about this at halftime off the air, John. The conditioning and strength of the Hilltoppers, I think, is starting to come through right now because that line is just taking over. Yes, yes. Handoff goes again, back to Chuha right up the middle. Pure power ahead is, again, they open up that huge lane for him, and he pumps those legs, and I don't know. I would guess he's in over 100 yards. He's got to be close. He's got to be close if he's not over. Because he's had about, uh, what, two, three, 25, 30 yard games now. That comes exactly. out, say three of them, that comes out to 90 yards, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's some good math. Thank you. New math, but good math. <laughs> there he comes. Again, wrapping around the race. Come on, boy, go down. <laughs> <laughs> could you see that kid just screaming? <laughs> right. You could just wait, come on, give me a break and go down. Another first down for the Hilltoppers. Looks Kevin like, keeps the ball, comes to the right on the option. Look, looks Defended like, very well by Sp Springfield that time. That looked like uh, somebody messed up with assignment. I'm not sure exactly who, but Kevin spun around like he was looking for an outside handoff, and there was nobody there. So I, I'm not sure if it was Kevin ran the wrong play or one of the backs ran the wrong play, but there was some sort of breakdown. because You saw Kevin froze for just that here before he had the presence to turn it upfield and make the best out of a bad situation. Makes it second and 11. 
with the ball spotted on the 20. Kevin drops back to pass, rolls out, finds a receiver down at the goal line. That's number seven, Dan Merritt. He gets into the end zone of Friday. A flag's on the play. We'll have to see what the call is. My guess would be defensive pass interference, which will be called, because I think that kid had his arms wrapped around Merritt. But Merritt says, uh -uh. and I'm going to back in the end zone. I'm tired of this chew hot kid right. taking all the touchdowns. I'm grabbing one. Let's, let's get someone else let's in the watch scoreboard. Let's here, see if we can see what happened. But I think he had his arms wrapped around him before the ball nice got Nice play, there. fake and block. <laughs> and a nice little pass. Yeah, he had that hand in there before the ball got there. Nice catch in traffic. And Dan Merritt takes the ball into the end zone. I wonder how much of a thought that was. Would you like to take the ball from the spot 15 yards or you want a touchdown? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I think that's pretty I don't need, you don't need to get a coin out to yeah. flip on that one. That's a pretty I easy call. I would hate to be the kid coming back to the bench who made the wrong call on that. <laughs> Bill Topper's going for two. Quick pass over the middle. Incomplete. Good coverage that time. I, uh, Number 46 for the Spartans, which is Scott Bergdorf. Pass was intended for number 23, Matt Gilson. The score now after that touchdown for the Hilltoppers is Chardon 29, Akron Springfield 7, 448 remaining in the game. As you said, John, that may have sealed it. Yes, yes, I, I believe I hear behind us the, these temporary bleachers, the fat lady warming up <laughs> back there. She's about ready to take her she's, to it she's away. She's gargling, I believe. Yes, she's very much. She's about to come on stage. Yes, one spit and the game will be done. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what that is in the score, but oops, it's gone. Whatever it is, it's a memory. Don't forget birthdays and anniversaries and other special occasions can be made more special through GTV. Send that terrific picture or pictures to us and we'll help highlight the event. Please enclose a self-addressed stamped envelope. Once again, our address is GTV, P.O. Box 336, Chardon, Ohio, 44024. Those of you who are still counting birthdays. Yes, I, I quit quite a while back, actually. I'm not counting them anymore either. There's the address. If you'd like to jot that down, you can send us your pictures, as long as they're not embarrassing or incriminating. Uh, there's been some of those sent in, <laughs> not by the principal, but by relatives. <laughs> friendly, right. No one's going to incriminate himself. Friendly right? enemies, as they say. Okay, as we got Parrish teeing up the ball, ready to kick it off. Kickoff's been getting a workout tonight. Absolutely. Is, that's the fifth it's a good thing he has sure. a strong leg. Fielded by number 20, Jeremy Renner. He yeah. takes the ball back out past the 25 to about the 28 yard line. Where he's met by everybody, I believe. Everyone on the field in a black jersey was involved in that tackle. I think there was about 16, 17 of them in that, that particular tackle. <laughs> For the most part, the special teams have played very, very well tonight. Yes, they have. They've done a good job. Kicking game's been solid. Coverage has been solid. You're right there, Doug. They've done an excellent job out there. Coach Dinko in charge of the special teams. Now I'm looking and we still got essentially the starting lineup on defense out there. Springfield will start this drive. First and 10 from their own 28 yard line. Pass to the far side along the sideline. Completed to Kelvington for a short gain if any. He's pushed out of bounds by several Hilltoppers. That's a good, safe little play. It's just a quick dump pass to the outside. Hopefully you can get the one-on-one. -on -one. I'm sure he's a shifty, quick back. If not, duck it out of bounds, stop the clock. As you try to get another score here, I mean, uh, really the game is pretty much out of reach right now, but you like to make it a little more respectable, take something in the next week where your offense. Huddleston drops back, scrambling for his life once again. Escapes and he's gets down quick. the sideline. He is a, a, a very elusive quarterback. Yeah, he's a, he's a super athlete out there. You know, plays a good, solid secondary. Uh, he kicks fairly well. Definitely a runner. Passing, 
He looks sharp. He just hasn't had much time. I'd like to see him with a some good to protection. I bet he's a real sharp on the money passer because I tell you, he's been running for his life and putting the ball in the area. His passes right. haven't been that much off. And every time he's dropped back, he's just had no time. No, immediately he's got to start on flight. Third and four. Huddleston drops back again, looks over the middle. Pass is thrown intended for number 11, Mike Kelvington. Broken up very nicely by number 43 for Chardon. John Housen again out there. We've called his name quite a bit tonight. Yeah, he's had a pretty big game from that outside linebacker position tonight. Good coverage, good run defense. So you can watch here, sets up, just barely gets, starts to feel the pressure, lets the ball fly. Yeah, it was a catchable ball. That was very good timing. Yeah, it was. he just took the hit. You got to tough those out and hold on to it. That brings up fourth down, four to go. They're going to punt it away. And they're going to punt it away. Uh, let's watch just to see if they seal the outside. I bet there was an adjustment made there. There'll be somebody hanging. Yep. They're going to kick it this time. Chardon sets up the return. Ball goes down the sideline. Ooh. Almost makes contact with a Chardon player, but Very not quite. Very much. Well, Ball is down by number 30 for Springfield, Larry Burge. I tell you, that is one thing I see about this field. Uh, the ball, you don't know where it's going to go. <laughs> you know, I've seen the bounce back punt, so I guess it's very dependent on the spin on the ball. Exactly. So you got to be careful of that sort of stuff. Grass cushions a little bit. Mainly, rarely do you see a ball come backwards on grass. Most of the time, they roll forward a bit. But here, that's about the third or fourth one I've seen bounce back at you. So that's something you got to learn how to play the field as well. And that will, over the course of time, become a home field advantage once the, the kids get a chance to play out here regularly and figure those kinds of things sure. out. Thing is, it hasn't been here long enough for the coaches to advise that because they're learning what this feels. They had a practice last night. That's the first time they've been on the field. So it's really not much in the way of a home field advantage if you don't know the field. But it will, will turn into one, ideally. I think the adrenaline factor probably swung toward the Hilltoppers tonight with the, the, the crowd and the, and the new facility and the winning streak and that type of thing. But you're right, once they actually get out on the, the playing service itself, that that in, as well will uh, will benefit the, the Chardon players. There's a flag down on the play. I think another thing Chardon had going for, I think uh, they had this tradition of excellence with the streak in the playoffs and all last year's team, you know, Though they played their hearts out, I'm not saying they didn't or nothing like that. They broke the string, and and a lot of these kids who were on that team were almost embarrassed like that. They feel they got to come out and prove something this year, you know, get the tradition back in place of being in the playoffs. Andy Island Field is in as the quarterback, hands off to number 21, Colin Henderson, makes a nice run. Out past the 40 to the 42 yard line. Coach Doyle coming with some substitutes here late in the game. Yeah, he's got, it looks like his line is, is essentially the same. He's protecting his quarterback. Isla Field is a good looking backup. He runs the ball very, very well too. He had some excellent runs in that, uh, open up a good lane outside there. It's a nice aggressive run by number 21, Colin Henderson. And there's an official's timeout with 3.20 remaining in the fourth quarter. Chardon very comfortably on top, 29 to seven. The home winning streak will continue and the night will be a success all the way around. If you're from Chardon. If you're from Chardon, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Let's, let's keep in mind we have two squads out there. One of them doesn't consider it quite as successful, though they got a good looking team. They're gonna have a successful season. Island Field hands off to number 35, Eric Clary. He cuts up the field, takes the ball down into Spartan territory near the 40-yard line. A couple of flags on the play. Let's see what the call might be. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, we got a little bit of substitution on Chardon's part, but it's hard to say how much substitution's done in the Spartans end. We, you know, all of a sudden, they're ripping open big holes and. Uh, Let's Clary takes the ball, it's makes a back. couple of nice cuts. That's another good hard run. Unfortunately, <laughs> as John indicated, they're calling that play back.
That was an encroachment? So that pretty much was dead before they started then. Mark off the penalty. Will remain second down. 257 to go in the fourth quarter. That will make it second and a long eight for the Hilltoppers. So we'll wind it down at 247 on the clock and running. Number 23, Matt Gilson split wide to the near side. Island Field takes the snap and hands off to number 35, Eric Clary. And he might have a short gain on the play. They're going to mark it at the original line of scrimmage for no gain. Yeah, I think we got free substitution going on both sides. These teams will meet again tomorrow morning at JV action down in Akron. We're at the two minute mark of the first game in the brand new Chardon Memorial Field. 29 7 Chardon. Island Field takes the snap, hands off. That's a hand off to number 34. To number 34, Albright. Matt Albright. He takes the ball to the left side of the line for a short gain. Yep, coming out of that fullback position that uh, Luke Chuha has made famous tonight. <laughs> They're giving Luke Chuha a well deserved break. Yes. Oh, he's, had, he's had some hard running out there this evening. He's had an excellent opening ball game. Fourth down and eight. Chardon drops back into punt formation. It'll be uh, Nick Parrish back to punt. Gets off a high spinning kick. It lands bounce at back. the 36-yard line and bounces back. Downed by number 36, Nick Skyler. Had a nice night in special teams. Nick Schuyler recovered a fumble. Minute nine remaining in the game. And we're down, uh, what, 37-yard line? And see some people are on their way back to Akron right now, which I don't blame them. It's a long trip. He must have got started on it. Coming from that area, yes, indeed, it is a long trip. You look over at the Chardon section, and that is still... Very full. Patterson's still in the game, still fighting. You have to admire that, John. His team's out of the game for all intents and purposes. He stays yeah. in the game, and he's still fighting for every yard he can get. Sure. That's, that's an athlete, and that's a competitor. That's nice exactly job. what you got to do. You play for 48 minutes. If you're out there, that's what the game calls for. Give everything you got. He's a good, solid ball player. They Absolutely. Get, they got some good. I think they're going to have a pretty successful season. You know, short of staying away from the injuries because the, their numbers, they're not deep. They're not deep at all, and injuries can pull a big deal on you. 30 seconds remaining in the game here tonight. Huddleston keeps the ball, and he's met yes. by a host of Hilltoppers. That might be somebody that should be sat down. That, I think if they're going to have a successful season, they're going to need Huddleston on as back there. As much as they used him, he's one yes. guy they cannot afford under any circumstances to lose. That's too big a part of their offense and defense. He's a darn good uh, safety man as well. Now the clock expires. The winning streak is intact, extended to 34 games. We've had a successful christening of Chardon Memorial Field. The final score tonight is Chardon 29, Akron Springfield 7. As you look back on it, to wrap up here in a couple of minutes, John, it's a game of turnovers. Oh, no question. Every score tonight, short of the field goal, I believe, came directly from turnover. You know, it was the turnover pushed into the end zone by, uh, that's how Springfield got their touchdown, that's how Chardon got three of theirs at least. You know, but uh, overall, again, it was rusty, it was opening night, it was a new territory here for Chardon at least and all, but it was very successful and uh, it's a good solid team and I think Springfield as well is gonna have, you know, I don't know if they're quite playoff calendar, but I think they're a good solid team that should be able to improve on their four and six record from last year. If they stay healthy, they're gonna have a, a lot of enjoyable nights down in Akron. Well, that just about wraps things up from the new Chardon Memorial Field. Thanks again to our funding communities for this game. They are once again Chardon Township, Chardon Village, Hamden Township, and 
Munson Township. For my partner, John Walsh, this is Doug Snyder, wishing you a pleasant evening. The final once again from brand new Chardon Memorial Field, Chardon Hilltoppers 29, the Akron Springfield Spartans 7. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.